Thank everybody for uh, coming out this afternoon. I uh, wanted to give a, an overview of what transpired uh, yesterday evening on the uh, double homicide, triple shooting, the SWAT call, as well as uh, some history that uh, led up to that incident uh, both yesterday and since the latter part of uh, January when we had uh, a, a number of calls uh, at this location. But uh, yesterday on June 11th at approximately 6.28 p.m., uh, our officers were sent to the 4600 block of East Turner um, regarding subjects that were arguing in the, in the street in front of that residence. Uh, while en route to the call, our officers received an update from our dispatchers uh, that a, a shooting had in fact in, occurred at that location. And upon arriving, the officers located uh, three shooting victims in the street. Uh, all three of those shooting victims were transported to CRMC. Uh, unfortunately, approximately 30 minutes later, 38-year-old uh, Pablo Mendez uh, succumbed to his injuries. And uh, shortly thereafter, at approximately 8.30 p.m., uh, 49-year-old Jose Mendez uh, also succumbed to his injuries. Uh, both of the victims uh, were brothers and uh, were celebrating a uh, family member's graduation from elementary school at that location. A third victim was also uh, located at the scene, a 26-year-old David Placencia, and uh, he was also attending that party and had received a single gunshot wound to the face. Uh, he was taken to CRMC and is currently listed in serious condition. And what led up to the shooting, uh, there were a series of things that occurred, but actually at the shooting incident uh, itself, uh, at approximately 6.15 p.m. last night, uh, five individuals who are all brothers, part of the Solace family, uh, had in their possession handguns and they had went to the, uh, 4677 East Turner where the Mendez family lived. Uh, they were in front of the residence in the street. Uh, they, uh, an argument ensued between the Solace brothers as well as the Mendez family. The Mendez family, as I said earlier, was hosting a party at that location. There were probably 20 to 30 individuals at that party, both in the front yard and the backyard. And uh, most of the individuals there were, were younger, under the age of 16. A verbal argument did uh, take place at that time. And at some point, uh, members of the Mendez family actually left their front yard, went into the street, and there was uh, not only a verbal argument, but a physical altercation that occurred between several subjects uh, at that time. Um, at some point during this physical altercation, uh, the Solace brothers, um, at, least, um, at least one of them, fired a handgun uh, striking these three individuals. Um, there's a good likelihood that there were multiple firearms fired at this location but we do know there was a, obviously at least one firearm that was used striking three people. Uh, at the scene, uh, after officers arrived, we were able to take into, uh, into custody Benito uh, Salas. Uh, he has been arrested and charged with two counts of murder and one count of attempted murder, and he has been booked into Fresno County Jail. His two other brothers uh, are wanted at this time. One of them, uh, both of them are listed here on the easel. Uh, number one is an Antonio Salas, uh, also known as Tony. He is uh, 34 years old. The second brother is 23-year-old Alberto Salas, uh, also known as Junior. And uh, both of those individuals are wanted at this time uh, for two counts of murder and one count of attempted murder and uh, both of them are considered to be armed and dangerous at this time. We believed uh, that they, these two individuals uh, last night may have been inside of one of the two residences at 4681 or 4687 East Turner, uh, where the Solace families live. And uh, we initiated a, a SWAT call out and utilized our crisis negotiation team. And uh, unfortunately, uh, after searching uh, those two locations, we were not able to locate uh, uh, either of the suspects. Uh, there was information that we had received last night that there was perhaps a tunnel uh, between 4681 and 4687 where perhaps uh, these individuals may have utilized to, to go from one house to the other. 
uh, but in searching the residence, uh, that was found not to be true. The uh, SWAT search uh, was completed about uh, 4.15 this morning, and again, uh, these uh, suspects were not located. I want to talk a little bit about the prior events uh, that occurred at the, uh, at the house, um, specifically on the day of the shooting. There were actually um, three calls prior to the shooting. Uh, the first call uh, occurred about 9.40 in the morning, and it was over at uh, Bakeman Elementary School, uh, 580 North Helm. There was a report of a, actually a, a physical um, altercation that occurred at the location, but it turned out that it was actually a verbal argument that occurred uh, between two members of the family. And um, when officers arrived, they made contact with one of the parties. And again, it was determined that there was a verbal disturbance uh, between the two families who apparently do not like each other. And, uh, but there was no physical altercation at that time. Uh, a short uh, period later, at approximately 10 a.m., uh, there was a call to 4677 East Turn, where the actual shooting had occurred. Uh, there was a report of a disturbance that uh, occurred at that location with subjects arguing, um, and uh, that, in fact, uh, was the case. Officers arrived uh, approximately 10 minutes later, and uh, in having contact with them, we were able to determine that there had been this ongoing um, feud between these, these two families. And uh, again, the, the, we were uh, told at that time that there was only a verbal disturbance. We received a, a third call about uh, an hour later at that same location. Our officers um, arrived uh, at approximately 11.20 yesterday morning at that location, made contact with the parties involved, again found out that it was an ongoing dispute, a verbal disturbance, and uh, the officer um, stayed on that call for approximately two hours. In fact, he parked uh, in front of the residence and down the street, hoping that, that his presence would be able to dissuade any type of further arguments occurring between the families. Um, unfortunately, uh, later that evening, um, at approximately um, 6.28, as you know, that's when we got the call to the, to the shooting, uh, and unfortunately the, uh, the disturbance did not cease. The, uh, there is some additional background um, as well. Um, the Mendez family and the Salas family had been living uh, next to each other uh, for the past 16 years within that same neighborhood. Uh, they are actually uh, property owners. They own their own residences. And uh, we noticed uh, as of late January that there appeared to be some ongoing um, feuds between these two families. In fact, we had um, four calls that actually uh, occurred between January 27th and May 23rd. Uh, on January 27th, there was an incident that occurred between the families uh, where it was reported that a knife was uh, brandished uh, by one of the uh, Solace brothers. Uh, unfortunately, in that incident, the uh, victims, uh, or the victim did not wish to pursue that case. Uh, there was another incident on March 8th, and that involved a, a, a battery between two individuals. There was a mutual fight that occurred. And uh, unfortunately, we were unable to determine who, in fact, uh, who the aggressor was. We did determine that uh, both of the individuals were intoxicated, and, uh, but there was conflicting statements. And so we were unable to determine who, uh, who could be or should be arrested at that time. A third incident occurred March 18th. And uh, that was uh, determined to be just a verbal argument between the families. And then a fourth incident occurred on May 23rd. And uh, that was actually a report of one of the Solace brothers uh, brandishing a firearm, was said to have at least had a firearm in his waistband. Uh, unfortunately, when officers arrived, uh, the victim uh, was not there. And uh, we were not able to uh, pursue that case. There was not uh, cooperation. Uh, from the victim's family at that time. And what we do believe is that there was a, uh, a fear uh, on the part of the victims to uh, report or to cooperate because of the fear of retaliation. And uh, we believe that to be true. Uh, 